So let's kick off this lesson on rotations in the coordinate plane by watching these headphones spin around on a record. In geometry, we call a rotation a change in orientation. Note that a rotation is not a change in size, and that rotation should not be confused with reflections. Now we are going to reference two directions for rotations. Clockwise rotations move the same way that the clock does, and counterclockwise rotations just move in the opposite direction that the hand of a clock would normally move. Now in addition to the direction of a rotation, either clockwise or counterclockwise, we are also going to reference rotations in terms of degrees. Just like this circular record, we're moving in a circular rotation, so our degrees are going to be between 0 and 360. Now a positive degree of rotation is a counterclockwise movement. So we start with a figure, and making one quarter turn is equivalent to a 90 degree rotation. A second quarter turn is adding another 90 to that, and 90 plus 90 equals 180, so this would be a 180 degree rotation. A third quarter turn would be adding another 90, this would be a 270 degree rotation. And a final quarter turn brings the figure back to where it started and completes the full 360 degrees. If we rotate in the opposite direction, this time clockwise, we will see that our rotations will be negative values. So a negative 90 degree rotation is one quarter turn in a clockwise direction. A second quarter turn clockwise would be negative 180, which we notice puts it in the same location as positive 180. So a 180 degree rotation does not matter whether you move clockwise or counterclockwise, you'll end up in the same spot. Another quarter turn clockwise would be negative 270 degrees. And a final quarter turn would complete the 360 degree rotation and bring the figure back to where it started from. Now we will say that rotating a figure is a circular movement around a fixed point, And we use the capital R notation to denote rotations. Remember that when the degrees of notation is a positive number, the rotation is moved in a counterclockwise direction. When the degrees of rotation is a negative number, we move in a clockwise direction. For our first example, we are going to rotate a point. In this case, point C is going to be rotated positive 90 degrees. Since the degrees is a positive number, we will be rotating counterclockwise. We can start by writing down the coordinates of point C at 3, 6. Since point C lies in the first quadrant, we are going to imagine taking that entire quadrant and rotating it one quarter turn. This allows us to find the location of the image C prime with coordinates negative 6, positive 3. Now we can see what if, instead of a 90 degree rotation, it was a positive 180 degree rotation. So in this case, it, we would need two quarter turns of that first quadrant. So the first rotation is the 90 degrees. Rotate another quarter turn completes the 180, giving us the coordinates of the new image C prime at negative 3, negative 6. Now if the degrees of rotation was 270, we would still complete the same process, but now we would need three quarter turns. So again, start with C in the first quadrant, one quarter turn is 90 degrees, a second quarter turn is 180 degrees, and a third quarter turn counterclockwise is 270 degrees, giving us the coordinates of the new image C prime at positive 6, negative 3. Now before we move on, let's just take a moment to visualize what we just did here when we rotated this point around the origin. In our last example, we applied a very visual approach to rotating a point around the origin. However, there are some rotation rules that we can also apply. 
When rotating counterclockwise for any point P with coordinates x, y, there are a set of rules for each type of rotation to find the coordinates of the image. Notice that those negative signs just mean to negate or do the opposite, so positive values will become negative and negative values will become positive. If we apply the point 36 from the last example, using these rules we see that for a 90 degree rotation, we would start with the y coordinate negated, so 6 would become negative 6, that's the new x coordinate, and then the y coordinate is the old x coordinate which stays the same at positive 3, and we can repeat this process for the rotation of 180 and for the rotation of 270. Now these points should look very familiar as they correspond directly with the points that we found in the last example using the visual method. If you don't think that's pretty cool, then I don't know what to say. Okay, moving on to our next example. Again, we're going to be rotating a point, in this case, a negative degree of rotation. Negative 90 degrees means we're moving in a clockwise rotation. We can see that D lies in the fourth quadrant with coordinates at 5, negative 8. Again, we're going to take a visual approach here. Imagine taking that fourth quadrant with point D contained inside of it and rotating the entire quadrant, in this case, in a clockwise direction. Now we can find the coordinates of the image D prime with coordinates negative 8, negative 5. Now let's go ahead and take that same original point D and perform a negative 180 degree rotation. Again, we take that fourth quadrant, one quarter turn clockwise is negative 90, a second quarter turn would be negative 180. Now again, we can find the coordinates of the image D prime at negative 5, positive 8. Now we'll take a look at what would happen if instead of a negative 180 rotation, it was a negative 270. Again, start with D in that fourth quadrant. One quarter turn is the negative 90. A second quarter turn is negative 180. We need one more third quarter turn to get to negative 270 with the image D prime at positive 8, positive 5. Now that we have completed all of the degrees of rotation, in a clockwise direction, let's go ahead and visualize what we did on that last example. Now, just as we had rotation rules for counterclockwise rotations, we have another set of rules for clockwise rotations. So for any point P with coordinates x, y, we have a set of rules for negative 90, negative 180, and negative 270. And again, those negative signs just mean to negate or to switch the sign. So if we use the point from the last example, 5, negative 8, by applying the negative 90 degree rule, we start with the y coordinate, negative 8, and then the second value is the negated x coordinate, so negative 5. Now you can go ahead and apply these rules for negative 180 as well as for negative 270 to get the coordinates of those images. Now again, these points should look familiar because they correspond with the points that we found in the last example using the visual method. So basically, it's up to you to decide which method you want to use. They each work effectively, but if you're going to use the rules, you're going to have to memorize them. Okay, so now we're going to step it up and take a crack at rotating a line segment. In this case, we want to construct E prime F prime after a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees. So that would be a negative 90 degree rotation. Now we can start by writing down the coordinates of the endpoints E and F. And we want to find the coordinates of the image of E prime and F prime. So again, we just want to take the entire quadrant that EF is in and rotate it one quarter turn clockwise. This allows us to find the location of the new line segment E prime F prime. Once we construct the segment, we can see that E prime is at negative 8, 9 and that f prime is at negative 6, 4. So basically all that we did was take that line segment EF and rotate it one quarter turn clockwise about the origin. And for our final example, we're gonna take a shot at rotating a figure, in this case, a positive 180 degrees. So we start by writing down the coordinates of the vertices of triangle LMK and we're looking to find the coordinates of the image of point L prime, M prime, and K prime. 
Now, since it's a positive 180 degrees, we're going to take this figure and rotate it two quarter turns in a counterclockwise direction to get it to its final location. However, if we actually made a mistake here and went the wrong way going clockwise, we see that we would end up in the same spot. So if you remember from earlier, for 180, it doesn't matter whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise, you'll still end up in the same position. Now using our visual approach, we construct three reference lines and we're gonna go ahead and rotate that entire quadrant two quarter turns in a counterclockwise direction. Now we can construct the image of the new figure, identify L prime, K prime, and M prime, L prime with coordinates at negative two, negative six, M prime at negative eight, negative eight, and K prime at negative seven, negative four. And now for our final words on rotations. A rotation is a circular turn around a fixed point. We also say that a rotation is a change in a figure's orientation. Remember that positive rotations move in a counterclockwise direction and that negative rotations move in a clockwise direction. Nailed it. <laughs> Please follow us on Instagram at mashupmath for free daily math tips and infographics. Thank <laughs> you.